All right, hey guys, let's go ahead and check this space out. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a full on install of this space over the next few days. And I will update you guys as things get done, but it uh, looks like the guys are already out here working hard. This is Cameron over at Insane AV out in the Houston market. So if you guys want some, some, extra, some nice renovation work done, don't hesitate to go ahead and reach out to him. He'd be happy to help you out. As well as he's part of Dream Media's preferred installer network out here in the Houston market as well. So um, I'm going to turn it over to him. He's gonna explain what he's doing in this space. He'll let you know about the room dimensions as well as maybe some future plans as well. But I will continue to update you guys as we complete the project. All right, so what we got here, uh, starting another job for a customer. Used to be two doors here, but uh, as we walk into the room, you're gonna see that presented a problem because there was no space to put your rear surrounds. So we're modifying, putting in a single door. It's gonna give us a, a, a spot for uh, our two rear surrounds here. Side surrounds won't be an issue, but the customer also wants to have all the speakers in wall, doesn't want any speakers on the floor, except for the two subwoofers are okay. So what we're doing is we're building out a little baffle wall in the front, and then we're gonna be putting three Escendo uh, 6P uh, monitors behind the screen, we're doing an acoustic transparent screen. So the goal for today is just to get all the uh, construction done and get this place wired up and then call the drywall guys in. So the dimensions of the room? I believe the room is 13 by 19. Another thing that we might be doing uh, a little bit down the road is we may come back and put in a riser for the customer. So in this corner over here, we're actually doing a uh, recessed uh, custom built uh, rack where all the components are gonna go. So we're gonna make sure that that's raised up uh, high enough to where it will not uh, pose a problem when we do the riser later on. And then possibly, well, if we do come back for the riser, then we're gonna end up moving this door up as well. So, but, you know, that's the one thing is we're, we'll, we'll work in stages with you if, if we have to, uh, just to get you up and running and get you going. But we're gonna try to prevent extra work down the road. Tell me about some of the components. So th this is gonna be a JVC NX5, uh, true 4K projector. We've got a Denon 6700. It's gonna be a 7.2.4. Four. So the Denon's going to be able to run everything. It's going to be an Escendo front end, and then all the surrounds are going to be KEF. And the reason why we chose KEF is because we're staying with that coaxial type of mentality, uh, getting all the, our sound waves radiating from one point. So, yeah, we're just putting in some, some KEF rectangulars for the walls. Kef circulars for the ceilings, and then the Escendo 6s for our LCRs. I think this is them right here, huh? Yep. That is one of them. And don't let it size fool you. That is a powerful speaker. Screen is going to be a Seymour Center Stage XD. It's going to um, allow us to put it a little closer to the speakers because of the, the weave. And it's actually going to uh, produce about as bright as you can with an acoustic screen. It's, it's, it's got a pretty, pretty good reflectance, not, not too much negative, probably pretty close to, to uh, a, a true 1.0. Pretty close. So let's check out end of day one. Got the front wall built out, all wired up, ready for the LCRs and the subwoofers in the corners. 
We've got the four Atmos speakers cut out, wired, side surround. Back surrounds are wired. Obviously we can't cut out for that because we changed the door, went from a double to a single, which will allow us to put rear surrounds in. Got our custom built uh, AV cabinet, built it uh, through the wall into the attic space. So we're not taking up any extra room in the theater. One of the things that uh, when you have a house that's built and the theater's not done is sometimes we're dealing with exterior walls and very tight attic spaces. So we have to make a couple extra cutouts just to be able to get up the wires up there and where they need to be. So that's basically next step. We need to get the drywall guys in here, drywall out the front wall, do a few patches and drywall out the door. Then we'll be back, finish the trim, go to paint and install all the equipment and this one will be done. So end of day one. All right, so dropped in for another half day today. Not much change on the front, actually nothing really, but a customer has decided to go ahead and add the riser in. So we put in the riser, it's seven feet deep, got the full step along the side, got a little step, a little oversized on the far side, and then we had to move up the door so we still have attic access. Kind of expected that to happen, and that's why we put that uh, AV shelf a little bit higher to begin with. And uh, yeah, so there's the riser. Everything's ready for drywall now. Okay guys, so let's check out this space real quick. So Cameron's been at work. Uh, he actually <laughs> helped paint because the painters weren't, uh, weren't up to snuff. So he came in here, painted, installed the speakers already. And then it's just been a lot of, um, a lot of uh, pickup work as, as well. So this was um, raised up because this was basically on the ground. This was installed purposefully, you know, at the height that it was gonna be anyway. And then uh, we have the wall sconces in, the projectors up, and now what he's doing is he's putting up the screen, making sure it's nice and level with the laser. But I wanted to pop in real quick, show you guys um, this part of it. So whenever you get the projector, you have to make sure it's updated to the latest firmware. So right here, I just turned it on and it's on version 3.50. So it's a little bit out of focus and that's not necessarily, you know, a, a bad thing because I'm about to update it anyway. And then I'm going to do the full finishing touches whenever the frame gets up there. So this is 3.50, which is good. You know, it still has the theater optimizer and stuff like that, but they have since gone to the version 3.51. It is April 24th, uh, 2021. So 3.51 is the most up-to-date one that we have right now. So since the projector has zero hours on it, I went ahead and installed the USB on the back of it. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the update real quick. So this takes roughly 17 minutes, you know, depending on which model that you have, but we're gonna update it to 3.51. And then um, I just wanted to show this off real quick too. And this isn't, you know, stuff that typically gets mentioned, but uh, Cameron installed these little stairs and stuff like that, you know, make it easier for people to walk around. There's gonna be another row of seating right here as well. So that's why there isn't a stair right there. But as you can see, he takes the extra time to put, to match all the plugs, right? So these are black. That switch back there, black. Over here, black. It's all this little stuff that you know you wouldn't necessarily think that makes all the difference, but it's all these finishing touches that really brings the room together. And I love the paint that's in here. <laughs> it's, it's 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 really nice and 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 uh, and, uh, and chill to be honest. So got the in ceiling speaker already up there. Got one, two, three, and then you got this little guy right here. And then these uh, sconces give you a really cool. Really cool uh, array on the ceiling there. So it's kind of a nice little feel, but I'm digging it. So I'm gonna update this, this projector. I'll pop back in here in a minute. Okay, so now we have the screen built. This is an acoustically transparent screen. It actually went together really quickly. Um, but I wanted to show this before we plop the screen on there. So these are the Eskindo. These are the CCM-6Ps. 
Is that correct? CCM 6-PX. Oh, okay. So. Or CCM P-6. <laughs> so these are the Eskindos, right? Uh, these are actually really, really short. And that's the reason why they fit into this little recessed area. So this is an exterior wall, right? Um, if you guys don't remember, this was purposely built out um, to give a little extra room here because they didn't want to, you know, cut into the wall and then the stud pattern, you know, all, all that jazz. But um, this was actually built out a little bit. These are, um, gives them a little bit nice of a flushability with flushability. <laughs> it makes them nice and flush with uh, the wall itself so that even whenever this is behind this knit screen, um, well, this woven screen, then you don't have to worry about the screen jiggling or stuff like that. But these are the Eskindos. Really, really like these things. I did a video on this one probably two months ago now uh, that that's been up. So you guys should check those out. But we're going to be covering these up with the grills, right? Since this is all black, this is all for a purpose. We're gonna be covering them up with the grills so that you don't have to worry about seeing these things behind this acoustically transparent screen whenever it's all said and done. So we're gonna get this thing up on the wall and then uh, we'll keep updating you in the, as the process continues. Cool, so this is just gonna be the final update for you guys. Um, there are some lights in here, so everything is gonna look skewed, right? So the white balance is gonna be off. But uh, we have the JVC projector projecting. <laughs> this is uh, the NX, uh, NX5, also known as RS1000. Um, we have a 120 inch wide 2.34 um, Seymour Excellent screen. This is what the, the XD? Yeah, Seymour AV. Center stage, XD. Center stage XD. So we have that one up there. It has the really nice border around it. Nice uh, little V-Lux and looks uh, really premium as well. I wasn't, I, I, I've never really liked, you know, the, the bigger borders. And you guys know this. I don't really like the big borders. But this looks nice. It looks like it's, it's supposed to. So I really like it. But uh, this was an acoustically transparent screen. Behind the screen, you'll notice that we have the uh, Skindo uh, sixes. And um, uh, again, this is a weave screen. So acoustically transparent. Um, this was a false wall built out from the back wall. So that was basically built out roughly um, four inches plus the drywall so that the Eskendos could fit flush in there with the screen. And it's not gonna jiggle around the screen or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about it. We have the Eskendo 12s down here. We have this really nice premium carpet as well. I really like this stuff. I was just telling them, I think it's like a number six carpeting, but it feels really good on your feet. So <laughs> you would really enjoy walking around barefoot with these things. We have the tributaries, power um, surge protectors back here. You guys know that I don't mess around whenever it comes to protecting gear. I, anything that's hooked up in the system always has to be protected. For too many horror stories of, oh, well, I, I didn't have my uh, you know router connected to the system. Lightning strike goes in, goes through the ethernet, fries all your stuff via the ethernet. I mean, it's it's. It, the, the stories are out there and the, the stories are, are out there for a reason. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense not to protect your gear. I know some manufacturers say don't plug your subwoofers into um, surge protectors because it may limit current and stuff like that. But I would rather be safe than sorry rather than have to buy something twice. And then in here we have these are the Octane seats. They're really nice uh, fit and finish. I like the diamond stitching on the side there. And these are just really comfortable. I mean, like they're flat leather. You really you wouldn't necessarily think, you know, you worry about creases and stuff like that, but these are just some really comfy seats. So over here we have the Kef. These are the in walls, the Unicues. Uh, really cool with these is that you can have a wide dispersion area for your sound. So you don't have to worry about, you know, where you're sitting as much. We have the same thing up here in the ceiling. And if you aren't familiar, you get the uh, different types of grills or you get the different choices. So you can get either the circular, rectangular, or the um, square. And over here we have, they elected for the rectangular for the surrounds. This was moved up. If you guys remember from the original video, um, this was actually uh, to, to the floor. So they moved it up to get to the attic back there. This was custom built. This is a uh, kind of a, you know, custom AV rack as it would be. And this was custom built in there. And they were already kind of considering that they would, they would be putting in a riser. So all this stuff was built out and, uh, and done accordingly. Up there's here, another shelf too. <laughs> and I'll finish oh yeah, yeah. There, there, there's another shelf back there. So all this stuff was custom made by uh, by, by handmade here in in uh, Houston. But up here we have the tributaries again, protecting the projector. Uh, we have a little tech flex to make all the 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 wrapping look, look look a little neater. 
NX5 as it would be, I went ahead and did the theater optimizer in here and I set it up for two different. So that since this is a 235 screen, I set up theater optimizer um, for the 235 on the installation mode and then I set it up again for the 16 by nine on the installation mode. Again, whenever you do uh, HDR movie, 4K HDR, the projector recognizes the HDR flag and it'll, uh, it'll figure all that stuff out. But I, wanna, I wanted to make sure that the customer had everything 100% 100 set up the way I would like it, you know, whenever I'm sitting there watching a the movie as well. So he got that 100% treatment as well as the sound calibration. Um, Odyssey doesn't always get it right. <laughs> so I like to put my personal touch on it. It was actually really close this time, um, to be honest. Uh, the crossovers were the biggest thing that I had to change. But other than that, it turned out really, really nicely. Like the sconces, love the black paint, love the carpet in here as well but uh let's let's turn off the lights and just show you this space real quick see if i can just pop these off so this is this is how it would be so i kind of was, was showing you guys um the way it would look with the lights on but this is this is nice this is premium this is a uh, this is where it's at so again full on 7.2.4 system and everything came together really, really nicely. I, I, I would give this one an A on a report card. And I just love how camera goes the extra mile, plans all this, all this stuff out. If you could pop lights on a little bit. He even added a Lutron dimmer back there. And then all these plates were converted to black. I mean, it's, all, it's just all the little touches. And then everything was measured out to the nine. So if you're looking straight down right here, you're seeing that kind of armrest right there in the back. So, I mean, it's, it's just all the little things. I think it turned out really, really nicely. I think the other thing to, to do now is to give you guys a quick little demo, but I'm really excited about this one. If you guys want work like this done, we're out here in Houston, Texas. We're out here in Katy, Texas, I guess, for this job. Today's Katy. Yeah, today's Katy. <laughs> but if you guys want something like this, we'll leave our contact information right down below. Really appreciate you guys for watching. I'm going to get into that demo, but thanks for watching, guys. Just wait for me, okay? You should wait for me! Oh 
on to the next one.